Hey guys, it's me Nate again. Um, today my video is going to be mainly uh, on some tips to prepare for your qualifier competition. It is qualifier season. Many teams are getting ready to enter their qualifier tournaments and then uh, some of those teams will advance on and some of those teams unfortunately it'll be the end of their season but we all worked hard so congratulations to all teams. Um, mainly like I said my video is going to be on some tips and tricks to prepare for your qualifier that'll help you guys out and uh, mainly score some maximum points and some things in the game that maybe you guys overlook that are legal to do. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's start with the solar panel mission. So this mission actually has a lot of moving parts and a lot more than what teams realize as far as like, you know, strategy goes and um, the different options that you have with this mission. You actually have a lot of flexibility with this mission. Um, it was a great mission designed by FIRST. Like they said in the uh, the intro video when they first announced the game, one of the cool things is that you actually do get to collaborate with the teams you're going up with, and that can actually benefit your team. Let me explain to you why pushing this forward can actually make your team lose four points. So um, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Most teams, like uh, even the team I coach, we go forward, we drop the carts here on the track, and then we also press the solar panel at the same time. A lot of teams are doing that approach. It's very common. However, this can actually affect your team if not done correctly. Let me talk about that. Because, um, like we've seen in the rules and the game, um, if you there's actually a bunch of different ways you can score this mission. So, if you just press forward, right, yours forward, you get 18 points, okay? If, you, if both of the solar panels are facing the same way, so this one is facing this way, and the one down on that side of the field is also facing this, this direction, then you get 22 points. And if you could do the combo, then you get 40 points. So let's talk about that. Let's say um, the team you're going up with, okay, can actually press both the solar panels. A lot of teams are actually uh, looking into this option. It is legal. You can read the rule updates on that. Our team is actually exploring this option as we speak. Um, so basically what that means is that uh, let's say our team is on the other side of the field or whatever team I'm talking about in this instance. Uh, the team that can press both solar panels, they would most likely press them this direction, okay? Because that would give, and then that one also. So that would give um, their team 40 points, and it would give your team 22. However, let's say, like I said, your team has 22 points right now. Let's say your team then runs in the last couple seconds this run. They drive forward, and then they press it back. So now you just got your team 18 points when you had 22. So you actually lose 4 points by doing that. So, like I said, you want to um, discuss with your team, see if collaborating with the team you're going up with is a good idea. Um, because if you can collaborate with them and you realize that the other team maybe can press both solar panels, then um, in that case, you might be losing yourself four points by pressing them back, you know, by pressing this one back in the other direction. So you lose yourself four points. Um, so that might not be good. Um, a lot of things is also that you can easily fix that. So let's say, um, you know, our, our team, let's say in this case, we're going to use our robot as an example. Let's say the team we're going up with has hit both solar panels, okay? Um, you know, this one's facing this direction. The other one over the, on that side of the field is also facing the same direction. So all we have to do is pull this piece off the robot. And then when our robot drives into the track, it no longer, it doesn't affect anything. Our robot can still drop the carts right here. But we no longer hit the solar panel back, and we save ourselves that extra four points because that's actually worth it. Um, so that's that's something your team might want to discuss and um, you know decide whether it's worth it to implement that design choice in your team. Another thing that you know you can consider is, like I said, this has a lot of different options. This mission. The other thing that you can consider is maybe um, if. If you want to design this and your, your team thinks it's a good idea, maybe not only worry about pushing it forward, but maybe you could have two programs, one where it pushes the solar panel forward, one where it pulls it backwards. That way, if, um, if let's say the team on the other side of the field, if they can only push theirs forward, okay, so, th so uh, the one on the other side of the field would be facing this way, okay? Then you can get yourself an additional twenty point or an, or an additional four points by getting a score of twenty two by just pulling this one backwards, and that'll give you the extra four points just because you have that kind of flexibility. Because, like I said, if you push it forward, only eighteen. If you can pull it back, that's twenty two. If the other team has theirs back, also. So that's just a, a tip I wanted to give you guys. You know, just as you prepare for competition, to think about flexibility with the other teams you're going to be competing with. Um, another thing I wanted to discuss with you guys is actually this astronaut mission in the cone module. So let me um, let me show you guys a cool tip with this. 
So one second, let me just set this up for you. All right, so as we've seen, the astronaut just, you know, sits like, you know, well, I, I don't have him in perfectly, but you get the point. A lot of teams are bringing him back to base, and then they're scoring him in a different mission. Um, and obviously, we've re we've all read the rules about where you score full points if you get him in all the way, and then if he's only partially in, um, then you don't score f a full score. Okay, you only you score a little bit less points. So one of the tips is this. If that's your design method where you plan on pulling him back to base, one of the cool things is you can actually, um, like I, re I recommend you guys reading the rules on this, um, j just for yourselves to have an explanation for this, but it is legal in my uh, opinion. You can actually rotate the loop. That way when you go to deliver him, you drop him in and he almost fits in a lot, he fits in a lot better and he doesn't you know stick out very often like every time so it's a lot easier that's up to your team to decide whether that's worth it or not in the rules it states that you can't take apart any um you know any part of the game field but that's not taking any pieces off so just make sure you don't take any of the pieces off and it should be legal um like i said i do encourage you guys to um you know read the rules for yourselves to get your own view on that one of the last things I want to talk about is consistency on the game field. So as you prepare for your competition and your qualifier, consistency is very important. I always tell teams that um, when you get to competition, your success rate on your missions drop anywhere from 10% to 20%, depending on how you know you, you program it and stuff like that. Um, the reason being that a lot of times the competition fields are slightly different than the field you're practicing on. Let me give you an example. A lot of times the competition fields actually have a big space here. Um, and so, you know, that might shift your robot off from where it normally starts. And thus, you know, shifting your, your missions and stuff like that. And so, you know, you might not score all the points. So that's one of the variables. The other thing is a lot of times the competition fields not only have a gap on this wall, but they also have a gap like on this wall. So, um, towards the base. So that's one of the things you should, you know, consider when you go into competition. Um, but you would want to go get, I usually tell teams a 80% success rate is pretty good to go to into a competition with. Mainly because if you go with 80% success rate, then, you know, it drops to 70% and it's still pretty successful. Um, if you can go higher than 80% success rate on your own field, then, uh, you know, go for it. Do that because that'll uh, help you when you get to competition. Um, and like I said, you know, consistency is very important. Make sure, you know, your missions are very consistent because if you have 10 missions completed and let's say you get like 200 points out of that, um, but you know, it's only like a 30% success rate that they all work. Then when you get to competition, when your percentage drops slightly with the variability in the board, you know, you might only score three missions even, you know, in a run. And that's, um, you know, that's can really affect your score that you had gone into the competition planning to score. You know, like if you plan to score 10 missions, and now you're only scoring three. Um, that's not so good. So consistency is very important. Also, I would recommend that teams practice about, you know, two weeks in advance. They start their students practicing on the robot just this way so they can get used to the field. Um, because there's so many different missions on this FLL field. There's so many different options. And you want to make sure that they can fit all the missions in the time frame as well. So it's a good recommendation to start a couple weeks early. Um, that way, you know, practice, practice, practice. Make sure you can fit everything in the time slot. And then you're ready to go when competition season comes around. Well, I hope I was able to help you guys with this, um, you know, with some tips and tricks for your qualifier tournament coming up. Good luck to all teams, those who advanced and those who um, unfortunately didn't advance. All teams worked very hard, and congratulations on another successful season in FLL. Um, if you have any future recommendations for videos that I could post, please comment below the uh, recommendations that you have. Remember, at 100 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway, so tell your friends if you think my content will help them and benefit their team in any way. And see you guys next time.